Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I'm Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. I have a brief word from the Lord that I received on March the 16th, 2022, and it surely is brief. I will just turn for a moment to Isaiah chapter 19, which is where the word stems from. So the prophecy that you can find in Isaiah chapter 19 is basically what is called the burden, burden against Egypt. And the Lord is speaking to the nation of Egypt, which as we know historically is the power that kept the Lord's people captive in the book of Exodus. That is where they were made to labor in brick and mortar for an excessively long time. But this prophecy in Isaiah 19 is a prophecy much, much further on in Egypt's history. So Egypt has rebuilt itself after the devastating plagues that it endured with Moses and Aaron as they led the Israelites out of captivity. And parts of it say this, the waters will fail from the sea and the river will be wasted and dried up. The rivers will turn foul. The brooks of defense will be emptied and dried up. The reeds and the rushes will wither. The papyrus reeds by the river that are by the mouth of the river and everything that is sown by the river will wither and be driven away and be no more. The fishermen also will mourn. Those who, those, all those will lament who cast their hooks into the river and they will languish who spread their nets upon the waters. Moreover, those who work in fine flax and those who weave fine fabric will be ashamed, and its foundations will be broken. All who make wages will be troubled of soul. So this is, I think, the crux of the word that the Lord gave me to bring. And its foundations will be broken. All who make wages will be troubled of soul. And so this portion here, even though it is written in typical biblical language, is basically talking about the failure of the economy of Egypt. It is saying that the waters will fail to come in from the sea and that even the river, this river is written with a capital R, which means that it's referring to the Nile. The river will be dried up until you can even see the reeds and the bulrushes that usually grow by the side of the river. Um, Egypt was famous for growing papyrus, which they used to make paper. Even those reeds will dry up and wither and be hanging down as if dead. All the fish will die because it says that even the rivers that draw from this Nile will become wasted and dry up until the fishermen start mourning and lamenting because they make their living from casting their hooks into this river, capital R, which is the Nile. And so it is talking about the failure of economics, economy, finance, and basically the economy of the country. So the, the way to make a living in the country will pass away. The Lord says that America, let me read from my journal. Uh, there is a wage crisis coming to the United States and an employment crisis also coming a crisis of low wages and no wages. So I had to go and do a bit of reading because I can't say that I am up to date on what exactly this meant. And just from cursory reading, it says that low wages refer to those who in the economy do some of the most work for the least pay. So you're looking at people in your sanitation services. You're looking at people who I guess are in the fast food industry, people who work in industries that are actually extremely vital to the economy and yet at the same time don't pay much. So we're looking at the custodian in a hospital, this guy is handling hazardous waste, you know, he's touching the kind of junk that comes off of bodies that are not doing their best. And even though he has his gloves and his mask and everything like this, just as a human being, what these people have to see, what the garbage disposal people people have to see is not the best. So low wage people are people who are earning either minimum wage or in some cases below minimum wage. And yet they do quite a bit of work and they get the least pay. The Lord says that there will be, there will come a crisis in that industry where even in that industry, that's not the best paying industry, people will struggle and they will not be able to get jobs. And 
He said that because of these lack of jobs for these people, they will fall back on the welfare state and deplete its resources. So in many of the prophecies that I have covered since 2019, the Lord says that the crumbling of the U.S. economy will be because he, the Lord, is choking off the economic supply and the economic sovereignty of America as part of the judgment for sin. So I discussed in those long ago prophecies in 2019 that America's enemies will actually start to enjoy quite robust economies, whereas hers will begin to shrink, will begin to falter, will begin to go through excessive difficulty. And God says that this is not just happening because of political machinations. See, when people have a worldly mindset and when they do not have their mindsets or their perspectives informed by service to God, knowledge of God, knowledge of how God does things, then when things are going wrong in the nation, people will always think, oh, it's because of who we elected. It is because of this and that and this. And so there are many people who are frustrated with recent past leadership and think that's why the country was this way. And then there are people who are frustrated with current leadership and think the country is being run into the ground this way. But here on the master's voice, I shared in 2019 and I shared in 2020 and I shared in 2021 that God says as part of America's punishment for sinfulness, he will give this nation horrible leadership. So part of the punishment is having leaders. And those of you who have been watching the channel will recognize what I'm about to say yes, next. He said that the leaders, if the leaders are faced with four choices, the best choice, the thing that everyone in the country will say, pick that. So even people who are divided because of their political views, they will come together and they will go, we want that, we want that, pick that. It will be the best choice and then a good choice, something that's not as good at the best, but pretty good for America. And then an okay choice, something where people are bound to grumble on both sides of the aisle. And then a bad choice and then a terrible choice. Note how the terrible choice is even off camera. That's how bad it is. It doesn't even deserve to be seen. The Lord said that the leaders will pick the terrible choice consistently. And this is not only in the United States, but for the sake of this prophetic word, America, God said that the American leaders will consistently pick the worst possible solution, the worst possible decisions, and that will destroy and break the country down even more. The country is not being broken down because, oh, we got this or we got that. It is a deliberate judgment from the Lord. So even politically, there is no part of life in this country where we are be going to be able to look and say, no, but God isn't here. God didn't put his hand here. No, I will read to you from, uh, Again, from Isaiah chapter 19, listen to the words of the Lord. Surely the princes of Zoan are fools. Pharaoh's wise counselors give foolish advice. How do you say to Pharaoh, I am the son of the wise. I am the son of the ancient kings. Where are they? This is God asking. Where are your wise men? Let them tell you now if they know what God has purposed in his heart against Egypt. Verse 13, the princes have become fools. The princes are deceived. They have also deluded Egypt, those who are the mainstay of the tribes. The Lord has mingled a perverse spirit in her midst, and they have caused Egypt to err in all her doings. As a drunken man staggers in his vomit, neither will there be any work for Egypt, which the head or the tail, the palm branch or the bulrush may do. So hear the words of the Lord here on the master's voice. The Lord is saying that judgment, and this happens consistently in, a, in the Bible. See, when a nation or a people sin against God, reject God, turn away from God's ways, when they shake God out of the midst of them, the way somebody shakes dust off a coat, God will depart, and with God goes all wisdom, all understanding, all wise choices, and all insight, economic insight, 
political insight, financial insight, religious insight, insight into how to raise your children, insight into how to have thriving marriages, thriving homes, and thriving national institutions. When you kick God out, God goes. But because God is light, light goes with him. And then the nation attempts to live on its own in darkness. So the Lord says here, the leaders will be like fools. The counselors will be like fools. The people you're listening to on um, perhaps how to invest, the investment experts and the child experts and the sociology experts, political experts, experts of all kinds. The Lord says that he will mingle a perverse spirit in the midst of them. And what they say is foolishness. And you only need to spend about 10 minutes a day on TV to say that this prophecy has already been fulfilling itself for quite some years. He will mingle a perverse spirit in the midst of them. And what does it say? They will cause Egypt, AKA the United States to err in all her work, to make errors, to go astray. The people who are instructing children, the things that they are instructing the little, little children of this nation in and telling them, oh, you need to know this. You're only five, but it's time to start exploring sexuality. It's time to pick a gender because the one that you came with may not suffice. We will even leave your gender off of the birth certificate so that when you're 40 and you want to be a girl, even though you are patently male, you can have the freedom to do that. This is the evidence of a perverse spirit that is mingled in the leadership of the nation. And then it says it causes the entire nation to err. But what else? It says that the nation will begin to stagger like a drunken man falling around in his vomit. Quite a picture. So when people come to this channel and say, oh, celestial, we don't feel the love of God in your prophecies. Instantly, when people say this, I know these people either don't own Bibles or they own Bibles as decorative ornaments. They're not actually reading their Bibles. There is absolutely nothing that I could ever say that tops the way God talks for himself. So when people come to this channel and they say, I don't know if this is God speaking, my answer politely is clearly you just don't read your Bible or you're just reading the New Testament and you're not actually reading this entire big chunk in the middle called the prophecy books from which the Lord constantly speaks to and teaches me. He said, nor will there be any work for Egypt that even the head or the tail may do. And this is the exact prophetic word that God has given me here. And I read it out. There is a wage crisis coming an employment crisis, a crisis of no wages and low wages. So I spoke about the low wages, which is the lower paid jobs will start to find that even low paying jobs are disappearing. This may be because the nation will move into automation. Automation is surely coming because automation is part of the, the beast system, the one world end times system where there is less use for humanity to work in the employment sector. Things will become highly automated and AI will be handling a lot of jobs. God says that this is to desocialize people. It makes people depressed when they go into stores and boutiques and supermarkets. You go into the supermarkets now and then the supermarket isn't even paying you a salary but has got you bagging your own groceries and yet you're still giving them money and included in the money you pay for goods is money that they ostensibly say, money that they claim they use to pay staff. But then you go into a place, there's no staff, so even to get your food, you're working and yet you don't work for Walmart or Kroger or whoever, but you're having to bag your own stuff. So automation is coming and automation is definitely going to be part of why there are less low paying jobs. But then the Lord says that people will fall back on welfare, but the welfare state will become bloated and its resources depleted. So I shared this prophecy. Um, there were quite a few homeless prophecies and loss of job, economic prophecies. I just can't remember the names of them. I will try to find at least two of them and put them as a comment, and it will also be in the description box. But the Lord says that eventually, because with so many people going on welfare, because even people who are very well off, off when the economy begins to shift in this way that God is talking about, people who um, have a decent amount of savings will 
deplete those savings and then people will fall on hard times. I saw that people who have never experienced homelessness before will start to experience it and the state will have its resources depleted. God showed me that even social security is eventually going to go away. So even those elderly people, you have worked for your 40, 50 years and dutifully paid your taxes and you are entitled to social security. Um, may it not be that in your lifetime, this social security fails because the state will be unable to pay it. It will be unable to subsidize medical. The state, the United States, um, will be unable to do a lot of its duties as the state. It will fail in the social contract, but God also shows me that it will eventually get to the part where the no wages part of this prophecy will come to pass. No wages basically means no jobs. A person cannot get wages for a job that does not exist. And the picture I saw from this was straight from the 19. 30s. I saw, you know, how when you see pictures or movies from those times, the people are moving very fast um, because that was the level of camera ability that we had back then, I guess. So I just saw a lot of men standing around, men in waistcoats with those high pants that they used to have with the suspenders and hats. I saw a lot of men standing around on the street corner just talking to one another and just spending the day. And that is how I saw adults spend their day back then because when the economy crashed, there literally was no work. There literally was nothing to do. The economy had no jobs, no wages. People were starving. People were just walking around, just hoping that a rich person needed their child to get a nanny or needed someone to mow their lawn and they would do any type of job. I saw that picture and the Lord told me that that is coming back, that that is what America is going to go through, that there is going to be a huge unemployment crisis in this country whereby people will not even know where their next meal is coming from because there will be no work. And even if you are very willing to work, even if you have a Harvard degree and you're willing to be a landscaper and you're willing to cut somebody's grass, people are going to not even need that kind of menial labor done. And so this is the word of the Lord based on Isaiah chapter 19. If you are struggling with a King James Bible, if you are struggling with a new King James Bible, I cannot insist enough that you gain the understanding of the prophetic word of God by getting yourself a backup Bible, a simpler Bible, and reading books like Ezekiel, books like Daniel, books like Isaiah, books like Jeremiah in an NIV, or you can get an NLT, a New Living Testament, New Living Translation. And I am not even going to pay attention to all the concordance kings and queens that may come here and argue and say, oh no, there is this, there is that. Simply put, when you have an infant, do you feed the infant steak or do you give the infant porridge and milk? Infants eat porridge and milk. And when it comes to the prophetic word of God, there are a ton of befuddled, lost, and confused infants in the body of Christ. People who have chosen, whether it is by their own fault or whether it is by their own negligence, which is still their fault, to stay in churches that have told them nothing to prepare them for the end times. They have not prepared for the end times in any way because Pastor Bob and Sister Hendricks always told them that they were flying away in the rapture and that none of the realities that we are currently facing would touch them. So these people are woefully unprepared. Their spirits are fainting within them like candles about to go out because they never thought that they would be here for any of this. So such people were shocked when, for instance, they started seeing ISIS killing people on TV. Like, oh no, we're not supposed to be here for the death of the marchers. Yes, we shall be here for martyrdom. Martyrdom is part of Revelation chapter six. We shall see it. Jesus spoke of it in Matthew 24. It shall be part of the church's reality. So will struggle, so will unemployment, so will homelessness, so will many terrible things. It is only the people who rest under the wings of the Lord, as it says in Psalm 91, that will see him arising as a fortress to save them. So if you do not understand prophecy, there is no shame in buying an oatmeal or a porridge Bible, such as the NIV, and starting to read that your understanding may be enlightened. God does not send, let me put it this way, as he said it to me, when you see prophetic messengers arising in the land, it is never a good sign. 
So the way that Satan counters it is Satan will raise up a lot of empty headed mushroom counterfeits. So the real thing, God will raise it up to speak because by the time prophetic messengers and prophetic voices start being raised up in a country, that country is in deep muck. Prophets only come when it's not going well for the nation. If there is no need the Lord will only occasionally send a word and say, well done, my good and faithful people. My heart is with you. This is why when Israel was doing well, Samuel never had to travel around from Ramah. He could sit in Ramah and just eat his roasted lamb and be at peace. But whenever the Lord sent Samuel on a circuit around the nation of Israel, it's because they were starting to do rubbish nonsense and mess that angered him. And the Bible says that when Samuel would appear at the gates of a city, the elders of that city would tremble and they would send a messenger to the gate to ask him, thou cometh in the name of the Lord. Is it peace? They were basically saying, have you come to tell us that the Lord is going to torch us or send the Philistines to fight us? Has the Lord sent us a good word or a judgment word? When you start to see the messengers of God rise up saying things that are not sunshine and rainbows, it is because the nation is already decrepit and spiritually bankrupt. So the way that Satan counters that is he will raise up a ton of daisies, daffodils, and wallflowers saying the exact opposite of what God is saying. And this causes confusion in the hearts of the people because they're thinking, but, but she's not saying what other people is saying. The, the word now that is confusing America is God's not done with America. You know, God, God's not done with the nation. I fully agree. God is not done. He hasn't even gotten started yet. We are in the beginning of sorrows, not only to this nation, but to all the nations. This thing that I'm talking about, not being able to find a job, not being able to put food on the table, this is a marker of judgment. The only reason it doesn't look like a marker of judgment is because we have all the CBCs and the NBCs and all the CNSBCs to tell us, oh, you know, let's discuss it tonight. We've got expert here and we've got the Harvard professor here. And so people are watching this this almost type of game taking place on TV and they're being bamboozled by that and thinking, oh no, these guys are trying to figure out the economy. Who can figure out the judgment of the Lord? When the Lord says that the jobs will go away, the food will go away, the government sustenance will go away, what expert on what channel is going to do what about that? The wise people will be like the ant and begin to prepare themselves in prayer. God, whatever comes to this country, remember your humble servant and her three children. Whatever comes to this country, remember me, my wife, and my son. We repent before you. We ask you to sanctify us. Give us bread, almighty God, when you destroy the bread of Egypt. This is what wise people are doing. Unwise people are busy trying to figure out if there is truth and distinction between the blue and the blue. But for my part, the Lord's word will come forth here with exactitude. Nothing added, nothing removed. So this is Celestial with the master's voice. Please read Isaiah 19. If you don't understand some of this imagery, get a simple Bible, read the simple Bible. When your teeth are strong enough and your belly can digest what God is saying to you, go back to your NIV, go back to your King James and your new King James. If you're not understanding, get yourself a simple Bible and start to become educated about what the Lord is saying. I'm glad that God has given me the grace to make two videos today. Until I see you again, God bless you and goodbye.